So this talk is an introduction to the adductor canal nerve block. First, we will go into the indications for an adductor nerve um, canal block. Then we'll look at the anatomy, how we conduct the block, and then the side effects and complications of performing an adductor canal nerve block. So the image to the left shows us the coverage um, when placing an adductor nerve canal block. We can see that we have cutaneous um, supply of the medial aspect of the knee extending down to the medial aspect of the of the leg and we have osteotome supply of the middle aspect of the knee and again of the medial malleolus. So not complete coverage of the knee and not complete coverage of the ankle. Therefore it can be used in combination with other techniques to provide complete coverage or can be used as an analgesia. Um, so the surgical indications are knee joint procedures, including total or partial knee arthroplasty, um, knee reconstructions, rescue blocks for minor arthroscopic knee surgery, and then because of the medial coverage of the leg, it can also be used for saphenous vein stripping, harvesting, and then also in combination for foot and ankle surgery. In this image, we can, uh, which is a cross section of the leg, we can appreciate what the adductor canal looks like. So we can see um, on the image to the left, the lateral, um, medial, anterior, posterior are labelled on the image just for orientation. And we can appreciate that the adductor canal is a distinct canal. It has muscular borders. Here we can see the muscular borders are vastus medialis, sartorius and adductor longus. The um, canal itself is conical in shape and it is 15 centimetres in length roughly. The contents are the superficial femoral artery and femoral vein, the saphenous nerve from the femoral nerve and the saphenous branch of the descending genicular artery, the genicular branch of the obturator nerve and potentially the medial femoral cutaneous nerve, the anterior cutaneous branch of the obturator nerve, and the superior medial genicular nerve from vastus medialis. It's important to note that all of these nerves provide a sensory um, innovation um, to the knee and the medial aspect of the leg and do not supply a motor supply. Um, this is important and this is really why the adductor canal um, has gained in popularity um, because it we have motor sparing. And despite the fact that we do not have complete analgesia, we have the ability to still move that knee adequately and therefore participate in physiotherapy and all the aspects of um, post-joint arthroplasty recovery, which improves long-term function. So as you mentioned, the adductor canal is uh, roughly 50 centimetres in length. It begins at the apex of the femoral triangle and it ends at the adductor hiatus in the adductor magnus muscle. Um, so we can see here the what the apex of the femoral triangle is. So that is at the medial border of the vastus medialis um, and it and we can see the hiatus um, there in the adductus muscle, which permits the um, the femoral artery and the and the femoral nerve, so the saphenous nerve that then goes through into the joint. So in terms of conducting the block, as with all blocks, full patient monitoring as per ASRA guidelines. Um, so EKG monitoring, blood pressure, capnograph um, and saturations. It's a sterile uh, technique, so sterile glove, sterile prep, IV access and sedation of using, needle length 10 centimetres, 22 gauge short bevel, um, potentially a long length needle in um obese patients. Probe, uh, we use a linear transducer, um, so the 8 to 12 megahertz probe. The volume, it's a volume block, so we need to fill the canal. Um, so we usually use 50 to 20 mils of your chosen local anaesthetic. So here we can see the setup um, in terms of the ergonomics for performing the block. So we have the operator on the same side to be blocked, the ultrasound machine located on the opposite side of the patient. 
Um, the uh, we usually use an in-plane technique with the linear transducer. We can see where the the needle um, position and pro position um, from these pictures. Ideally, the patient would have their leg externally rotated and the knee bent um, to allow for the uh, superficial femoral artery and the saphenous nerve to become more superficial. So in this set of images we can appreciate the dynamic relationship between the sartorius muscle and the and the contents of the adductor canal. So we can see the sartorius muscle in each of those three images, A, B, and C, corresponding to the three levels on the leg. And we, and we know that the sartorius muscle um, courses from the anterior superior iliac spine in the hip, um, so from the lateral aspect of the hip, um, and it courses across the leg to insert on the medial side of the proximal tibia. Uh, we know that the uh, femoral vessels um, course um, in the middle of the leg, um, traver traversing from the mid inguinal point down towards the knee. So we can appreciate that as we travel more distally in the leg, the sartorius muscle is going to travel from the lateral aspect towards the medial aspect and the vessels will stay, um, will traverse a linear, more linear route. And we, can, and we can see that from the corresponding images. We can see in A, which is more proximal, the sartorius is positioned more laterally. Um, in B, as we move more distally, we can see the sartorius muscle moving across the vessels. And in C, we can see the sartorius muscle has now more medial relationship to the femoral, um, femoral vessels. The contents of the canal, as we've already spoken about, contain the superficial femoral artery, superficial femoral vein, and then a variable degree of sensory nerves. The most important is the saphenous nerve from the femoral nerve. Um, that has a um, has a moving relationship to the femoral artery and so high up in the leg it is lateral to the femoral artery and it crosses over and um, finishes in a more medial position as you travel more distally in the leg and we can see in the corresponding ultrasound images as we move more distally we can appreciate the nerve is moving across and over the artery So here we um, see the most typically chosen um, position to do perform an adductor canal block, which is the mid sartorius, which means the, um, the vessels are in the middle of the sartorius muscle, which we can see labelled. Um, the reason to choose um, the mid sartorius is that we are definitely within the adductor canal borders and that the nerve to vastus medialis which gives us the analgesia aspect for knee surgery is still within the canal so it's still reliably blocked. Um, we can also appreciate here um, that we can see both nerves both the um, nerve to vastus medialis and the saphenous nerve on this ultrasound image which isn't always clear on patients. Um, so you'll remember from our previous slides, uh, we stand on the same side to be blocked with the ultrasound um, uh, machine on the opposite side of the patient and the needle trajectory is from lateral to medial. Um, we will um, approach uh, the needle path is through the sartorius muscle and we can penetrate the sartorius muscle either at or um, come through the sartorius muscle rather either at the adductor canal um, so at about 11 o'clock um, to the femoral artery on this image or we can um, we can penetrate the sartorius muscle further away to the adductor canal and have a um, less oblique path through the vastus medialis muscle. 
the um, important aspect um, is to um, be able to block this nerve to vastus medialis. Um, and so purists will um, choose the superior approach to the adductor canal um, so that you are in close proximity to this nerve to vastus medialis. So in terms of um, sonoanatomy tips and variations for the adductor canal block, as we've said, mid-sartorial placement, um, i.e. where the vessels are mid-sartorial, is a good choice for the vast majority of patients as it gives you a um, a good chance of blocking both the saphenous nerve and the nerve to vastus medialis. Um, injection into the canal should, it's a fixed space, so it should move the contents of the canal. So a successful adductor canal block, as you inject the local anaesthetic solution, you should see the femoral vessels move. Adductor canal catheters are particularly effective, and this is a technique that is um, has transformed the outcomes, really, of patients undergoing knee surgery and the saphenous uh, nerve may be visible on either side of the superficial femoral artery because as we know it the saphenous ne nerve changes in relation to the femoral artery as it traverses the adductor canal. So in terms of side effects and risks of an adductor canal block um, there it shares all the common side effects of all nerve blocks, so bleeding, infection, failure and nerve damage. And really the side effects and risks come from the local anaesthetic solution either spreading more proximally or spreading more distally. If the, um, the local anaesthetic spreads more proximally, it will um, block the femoral nerve proper, so you'll start to get... Um, motor blockade of the femoral nerve so you'll get quadricep um quadricep blockade if it spreads more distally it can it can go through the adductor hiatus and then um block the sciatic nerve that's incredibly rare but ha that has happened Overall, the adductor canal block is a very useful technique, especially for um, surgeries on the knee. Um, please go and um, check out these resources for further information and further images.